Yes, sir. Yes. I forgot to announce that we're having a ladies meeting at Granny's house 530 Tuesday night. Okay, Tuesday night. At Pastor's house? Which is supposed to be <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, I think it's started at 9 o'clock that night, but okay. it should be done before then. All right. Right? 5 Tuesday night, yes. <laughs> okay. We should go 10, 11. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to read, to open up today's worship service from Psalm 57. And I'd like to ask you to please stand with me for the reading of God's Word. <coughs> Psalms 57, verses 7 through 11. My heart is fixed. O oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up my glory, awake psaltery and harp, I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people, I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, let thy glory be above all the earth. Please take your hymnals now and turn to number five. Number five. Let's sing, Be Exalted, O God. Yeah. 
Number 10.
beautiful song, though. You may be seated. So, the, again, the purpose of reading the scriptures and singing these songs that are lifting up and glorifying God is also that we can prepare our hearts. Let the words, let the word of God, let the words of truth work in your heart so that you're prepared to worship. Prepare to receive the word of God. That's really the best type of worship, is to listen and to show God reverence that when the word of God is being given to you, preached to you, taught to you, that you're receptive to it. And you do something with it. So that is real worship. So, um, so just is going to play and then okay, come on up here. We're going to play number 66.
that was awesome. Jose, hey, what was the name of that song we sang out of the binder? Uh, Only a Holy God. Only a Holy God. There are some songs that I particularly like because they, they lend themselves to a fun exercise, and that's to take the words of the song and, and map them to Bible verses. Have you ever done that? It's, a, it's awesome. And that song, wow, would that be um, incredible when you map that, uh, that, that song to Bible verses. It's a powerful song. Well, next, we are going to, if you guys behave yourselves today, I'll just put it that way, okay? Kirsten, are you listening to me? Yeah. All right. If we, she's not. <laughs> We're going to finish the book of Daniel today. And um, we are going to next week start a series on, on, um, on eldership, biblical leadership. We have for, I guess it's been a six month journey now, Jose and uh, Gus too, to, uh, to bring them, to bring Jose on board as an elder and Gus on board as a deacon. And uh, you may think that, you may think that them being the two best looking guys in the church, we're gonna go TV. And that's why we're doing this, <laughs> all right? No, no, that's not why we're doing this. It's because uh, that's the way God would have us to do it. So I, I give you that heads up about that so that if you have any, any questions um, to them, about them, for them, with them, uh, before we start that, uh, that discussion next week, that biblical study on that subject, that you could corner these guys and say, hey, I want to hear your testimony, or hey, I want to... Uh, what is your, philo your philosophy or vision for what the church should be doing and, and those kinds of things. So this is your, your opportunity to do that. And uh, uh, I, well, we've known, how long have we known Jose? Decades. And uh, Gus almost there, right? It's been, so, so they're long time, they're long time guys who really have been living in these roles already. We just need to formalize it. So, um, as I say, corner them, do what you need to, beat them up, um, make them uh, uh, as uncomfortable as you can. And, uh, Thank you. And then, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, and then we'll move forward with that. So the title of our message today is The Trouble with Numbers. Uh, I like titles, and, uh, and that's what I think this one really is about. Um, are we on? We are on slide one. Uh, isn't our IT section awesome? I think they're awesome. So, and we have our other IT guy way back there in the back. So the, the title today, like I say, is The Trouble with Numbers. And, and if in a perfect world, we will finish our study on the book of Daniel today. So at the very beginning of this book, slide two, please, Lauren. Uh, we saw Daniel teaches us that God is in control. I tell you what, he's on the throne. That's why that song that you picked, Jose, for, for today could not have been better time. Honestly, if you walk away from a study in Daniel and, uh, and get nothing else out of it, I want you to know that God is in control. He has a plan. He's on the throne. Nothing happens accidentally with God. And... Daniel was told of the coming kingdom, all of those kingdoms. Remember those four kingdoms we went through? He was told of them that they would rise, that they would fall. And we have seen in our day and age much of that validated by history, which I think is just awesome. You know, Daniel got all this word. He was a great and mighty prophet of God. He was a magnificent man, and he would have been a magnificent man in any generation of human history. But you know what? Are we so much the more blessed because we've got all that history, 2,500 years worth of history, that now we can take his word and lay over this, and we know so much more about what Daniel was told than even Daniel did. And it's all because of God's grace in allowing us to be born at the time we were born. So I, I think it, it's awesome. In fact, a lot of the prophecy found in the book of Daniel has already been fulfilled. So this should give us great confidence in knowing that the remaining prophecies will also be fulfilled. You know, if 80% of Daniel's prophetic speaking, his writings have already been fulfilled, and I would say it's roughly there, what would make us think that the remaining 20% is going to go dormant and not fulfilled by God? That would be foolish. That would just be foolish. We can trust God. You have trusted him with your soul. 
You have, when you were born again, you trusted him with the safekeeping of your soul. You can trust him with your future as well. And here he has laid it all out for us. Slide three, please, Lauren. Today we'll pick up our study in verse eight, where Daniel, he expresses his lack of understanding. And he receives some final words here. Daniel 12, verse five. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on the river bank and the other on that river bank. So if you, what do I have up there? Okay, just the writing. Okay, how long shall, and one of them, and one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river. So if you get the mental image, and I think I have a picture of it off of Daniel's cell phone coming up here shortly. But you've got one on each bank, and you've got the one in the middle over the water. How long, and the one, one of the ones on the bank asks the one over the water, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? And Daniel is seeing all this. So no wonder he's saying, I'm, I'm a bit lost here. Uh, then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he had held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven. So he's got both hands up. And swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be fulfilled. Now slide four, please, Lauren. Daniel 12, 8. Although I heard, I did not understand. That's probably the most honest and open statement you could possibly find. I heard what I heard, I don't understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? I love that verse. Daniel, this great prophet, didn't understand what was going on and, and what was being said. Uh, we know he heard it all quite clearly because he wrote it down. So it wasn't about the fact that he couldn't hear it or could you repeat that because you mumbled there. It wasn't any of that. He heard what he heard. He just didn't understand it. But uh, he couldn't make sense of it. You guys remember times in your own life when you did that? How about your first day in algebra class? How about for me, my last day in algebra class? <laughs> you know, you, you, you hear it, but do you grasp it? I, it's, 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 the one thing that always saved me in my career through all these difficult, guys like John, you know, you hire geniuses, right? You want to know what to do? Hire a genius. So that's what Daniel is saying. I don't understand what's going on here. I need to talk to somebody to figure it out. So do we have slide five up there? No, let's go to slide five. I see at least three things here that he was puzzled over when I look at this. First, there is the identity of the man clothed in linen, the man that's over the waters. I believe this man is the same one that was described in verse five and six of chapter 10. And some, I, and to include me, think that this may be a presentation of the Son of God. Go to slide six, please, Lauren. Second, the next thing Daniel puzzled over here is the reference to time that must have puzzled him. In verse six, one of the angels asked the man in linen, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? In other words, how long will it last? How long is it going to last? And he was told that it would be for a time, times, and half a time. Now, how long is that? Huh. Yeah, I know. 1,260 days. Exactly. Jewish. Don't forget that number. That will, what, what's that? I said based on the Jewish calendar. That's right. Awesome answer. Yes, don't forget that number, Becca, because we'll need it here in a bit, okay? Daniel would have struggled with this meaning, though. Time, times, and half a time? Serious. Think back to your algebra days. They put stuff in... What do they call those? Brackets? Parentheses? And brackets. And brackets. And, and you, what? And letters. What? Is it, you know, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm sympathetic to Daniel. I really am. We have what Daniel didn't, though. We have the additional writings to include the book of Revelation to help us figure some of this stuff out. And that's what Becca was actually quoting there. We believe this, this speaks to the three and a half Prophetic years, as she said, prophetic years or prophetic day count, making 1,260 prophetic days. That's what this time, times, and half a time mean. And we have the advantage of additional writings that Daniel didn't have to figure this out. So as to its specific place in time, you take this, so that is a three and a half year period, the specific place in time, I believe this time, 
times and half a time speak to the second half of Daniel's 70th week. So it is the second half of the great, the, the, the tribulation period. Slide seven, please, Lauren. Then there's the annihilation of his people that he's told about here. Uh, spoken of as the power of the holy people being completely shattered. So he's putting these pieces together. Who is it that's speaking? What is this timeline? And we are talking about my people? So he's puzzling over all these things. The translation completely shattered there is accurate when we talk about that. Uh, and it, 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 in the Hebrew, it means to be pulverized. There will be a time when Daniel's people upcoming will be pulverized. Israel will be at the complete and total mercy of the enemy. And, that will, that, and they'll take full advantage of it to wipe them off the face of the earth. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I have a question about you saying that um, you think it's going to be the first three and a half years? The, 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 the last three, so the second, the second yeah, half. You're saying I would have to disagree only because if you go down... To respectfully the, disagree. Yeah, respectfully disagree. <laughs> Thank you. Only because when you go down to verse 11, it talks about from the, yeah. from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, which will be at that three and a half year mark. Yeah. There shall be 1,290 days. Yes, but we'll get to that. Okay. There is a 30 day difference there, isn't there? Right, and then there's a 45 day difference. Yep. If you keep reading, down, yep, we will get there back up. And I'm hoping that when we're done, you will say, aha. You'll have an aha moment. Okay. All right, so we'll see. Because the days, as, as she's pointed out, don't, don't match up. So we're gonna talk about that. But to be completely shattered, is accurate. That's what the Hebrew there means. Uh, it means to be pulverized. So Daniel, his thoughts toward his people, he must have been aghast and shocked. How could you do that, you know? I'm sure he could hardly believe that the same God who had saved them so many times through history would allow this to happen. He was always stepping in and saving them. And now he's being told they're gonna be, this is not gonna be good. In our time, in our time today, we know that God is bringing his chosen people, as we look at this, to the crucible of decision. This is what this is all leading to for them. And this is a, a decision they're going to have to make for themselves. Okay, those who choose to follow God ultimately will enter the kingdom. Those who don't will be removed. Uh, but again, we, uh, we have the advantage of much more data than Daniel had. So the angel answered him really in an astounding way. Go to slide eight, please, Lauren. And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the end of time. So he's got all these questions, and what is he told? Don't worry about it. Yeah, that we got this, Daniel. Don't need your help on this from here on. I'm just telling you how it's going to be, so, so we're going to move forward. That's not the answer. I don't think Daniel, he didn't want that answer. Slide nine, please, Lauren. The, the time of the end encapsulates the same frame time as the time, times, and half a time that Daniel was told about in verse 7. I believe the time of the end and these time, times, and half a time are the same. A potential key word in this verse is till, okay, till the time of the end. So during that terrible, I think the last half of Daniel's 70th week, I believe God is going to open the book of Daniel to expose its full content to those who are running to and fro, trying to figure this out. Remember, we talked about that earlier in this chapter. They're going to desperately want to know what's going on, and where do they go for their source? The book of Daniel, right? That's where they're going to go. That's what we're told. They're going to open up the book of Daniel, just like we have over these last few months, to look and see what is there. And they're going to do it in a desperate way because they're going to be in desperate straits. The scriptures tell us that their knowledge shall increase. So I believe God, through his spirit, will open this thing up to those that are truly seeking. So Daniel is once again told that the revelation given to him will not be completely understood until the time of the end. So I think that's a word to us too. As I teach some of these, uh, like the, the meaning of these timelines here, I could very well be wrong. I'm just being honest with you there. And I'm telling you what I think, but what I think, I would not be surprised if we're all sitting up in heaven uh, at the end of this, watching it play out, and the Lord shows us something different than what you hear from me. Okay, so just keep that in mind, because I'm talking about prophecy interpretation. And I'm going to give you what I think. 
uh, and I'm reasonably secure in it. But if I find out that these extra 30 days, extra 45 days mean something different than what I think they mean, I'm first in line to say I would not be surprised. Okay, because we are dealing with what's yet to come. And in this case, with this book, he says the angel told him, it's sealed, it's done. There's not going to be any more revelation until the time of the end. So I'm trying to figure this out for myself and for you. But we are not in the time of the end yet. So there are things that God is not going to share with us in this dispensation that he certainly will share with them in the end of time. So that's how he works. He's not telling us, he's not tipping his whole hand to us. But with the words closed up here, the angel told Daniel that he was not going to get any more information. But that's okay, because the primary purpose of this revelation, this particular part of Daniel, is to inform those who will be alive at the time of the end. They're going to be the ones who need this data. So we will finally see the fulfillment and meaning of all this, but we are going to be watching it from those heavenly seats uh, up there. And I assume we're going to have the recliner type seats. You know, the, 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 no? Yeah. I think we will. Now, Kirsten might not. But somebody's got to be bringing us popcorn, right? Bacon greased popcorn is what they serve in heaven, and no worry about clogged arteries. So as time moves on, I think future believers and seekers will have a, a, a better and more full understanding of what Daniel was told uh, in this last chapter, because their historical database is going to grow past what we know today. So that's where I'm at. Do we know more about the book of Daniel today than Daniel did in the time of Daniel? Yes, obviously we do. Because 80% of it, we know, has been fulfilled because history has told us that. We can take actual history, overlay it over the book of Daniel, and have our aha moments. Uh -huh. All of that was prophetic when it was written, but it's fulfilled. So as time goes on, that historic database will only continue to grow. So future generations, particularly those in the time of the end, will have um, all of that to overlay, and they'll have their own aha moments. Okay, go to slide 10, please, Lord. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So Daniel is informed here in verse 10. Okay, I just got the verse up there. That the time of the end will have a twofold result. First, it's going to result in the purification of the saints. They'll be purified, made white, they'll be refined. Second, it will reveal the true character of the wickedness of the human heart. Two things there. So those included in the word many, many shall be purified, are those who have turned to God. Those not in this group are referred to as the wicked. There will be those two groups. Now who is this two, by the way, right now that we're reading? Who's the, who's the audience? The Jews. This is to Israel. This is to Israel. There will be those in the end who turn to Christ uh, through that time of the tribulation. And I think particularly toward the end, when things really get hot and heavy, there will be many conversions to Jesus Christ. I think millions. I think when you look at the book of Revelation and you see the crowds that are standing there before God as this thing uh, wraps itself up, I think millions will turn to the Lord Jesus Christ as their Messiah during this time. Yes, they do. I do. Uh, I'm fully convinced. Those included in the word many then are those who turn to God. And those that are the wicked are those that reject. Now we do know the numbers. We know that a third of Israel will turn to God. Two thirds will reject him and be wiped out. We'll talk about that I think in a minute here. But to be purified means to be polished. Those who choose God will reflect his glory. I like that phrase. I like the way what that means. What that tells me is it's like us as New Testament Christians. Do we generate any glory ourselves? Everything we do in reflecting the holiness of God is truly a reflection. It is a reflection. It is nothing that we generate. It will be the same for them. Okay, that they, they, Those that choose God will reflect His glory. That's what it means to be. They're polished, so they reflect. If you can get the visual picture. They will reflect the glory of God to those around them. They'll be made white. So the Hebrew word here means to be, honestly, it means to be made into like a brick. They'll stand firm. That's what being made white there means. They will reflect God's glory and they will stand firm. 
as they do it. As they do it. So to be refined is to be purified through a process like the goldsmiths use with gold that removes impurities. They're going to come through this refining process as an immovable force to shine forth the glory of God. What a picture he's painting for us here. But the wicked shall do wickedly. They'll do what they do. These wicked have set their hearts and their minds uh, as though it is in concrete to go against God. They're going to do what you would expect them to do. Wicked people do wicked things. So the language here tells us that the wicked will not use discretion or discernment. That's what the, the Hebrew would tell me. They will also not have the, the ability to... to to really rationalize and think or take instruction. They will not be among those who are running to and fro, seeking knowledge so that their understanding would increase. They're going to be rejecting God right up to the end. Slide 11, please, Lauren. At the end of Daniel's 70th week, we have that one-third of Israel will turn to Messiah. Gus, did you use this verse in Sunday school? I did. That's awesome. They are the purified ones. Zechariah 13.8. And it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that two-thirds of it shall be cut off and die. Those are the wicked. But one-third shall be left in it. I will bring one-third through the fire, will refine them as silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. And they will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, this is my people, and, e and each one will say, the Lord is my God. And you were dealing with that in Zephaniah, where it says, all the people will... Well, well, it's talking about the fact that um, in, at this time, this is what's going to happen. So the remaining Israelites, those that don't turn to God, will be wiped out entirely, along with all the wicked Gentiles of that time. So as we go into the millennial kingdom, which occurs at the end of, of uh, Daniel's 70th week, every person who steps into that kingdom will be born again, will be saved. There will be believers, all of them believers. Okay, so for some, uh, I mean, for an additional fascinating reading, this was Zechariah 13, verses 8 through, what did I do, 8 and 9? If you want some fascinating reading about this whole subject, read Zechariah chapters 12 through 14. It's a broader, bigger picture of what we just encapsulated. Well, then we come down, and we get into our trouble with numbers. The Lord ends his revelation to Daniel with these mystifying numbers. Look at verse 11. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, which is the middle of the seven years, three and a half years in, and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. Now we've got some dates here, some days. So in reading these verses, it's not hard for me to understand why Daniel said, I heard, but I don't understand. Daniel 12, 8. Our ability to interpret these verses, by the way, is entirely um, dependent. I think it's very difficult because of what we've already discussed. These words are specifically <coughs> intended to sustain those who are going through that great and terrible time. Uh, they will have a whole lot more of human history at that time uh, that we so heavily depended upon as we looked at the earlier chapters in this book to overlay on these verses that we simply don't have. So don't get too bogged down in these numbers today is what, 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 what I would say. The future is going to reveal their full meaning to those who need that information at the specific time that they need it. I think that's what God's promise is. But... Being a pastor, you know, it's, it's, as, as we, we preach the word, you know, we can't just shut our mouths and not look at it, right? we got to talk about this. I'm going to tell you what I think is going on here. Um, and, uh, and you may uh, get to heaven, like I say, and, and he said, Pautsky said something different, Lord. He, he said, are you sure you're right? Uh, I wouldn't approach it that way. I would just say to the Lord, praise the Lord. Now I know. <laughs> Slide 13, please. According to verse 11, a period of 1290 days is going to elapse from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away until the time of the end is consummated. So it, uh, it is referred to as the abomination of desolation there. So I believe that the time, that is the daily sacrifice, is taken away. 
refers to the same thing as the phrase, the abomination that maketh desolate, is found there in Daniel 9, 27. So I see this statement as telling us that the sacrifices Israel will reinstitute at the beginning of Daniel's 70th week will be forcibly halted in the middle of that seven-year period. Now, I am surprised by a lot of this as I, as I study it, because it, how many Jews are out there yet that even understand what these sacrifices are? And yet they will reinstitute them at the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. Beckett. Well, here's a fun fact. They're actually training um, Jewish boys to learn how to do these sacrifices. Yeah, but the numbers are so small. Yeah, it's that's a, that's small. why I did, this is a broad thing. It's big. So uh, to make all this happen, I, I, you know, it's a head scratcher to me. But God is, he gave a, a physical picture of this future when Antiochus Epiphanes, remember when we studied him, he desolated the temple, just destroyed things. We studied him in Daniel 8, 11 through 14. That was a physical picture of what was yet to come. But this Daniel 12 prophecy was not closed when old Epiphanes desolated the temple. Jesus himself saw the future fulfillment of it when he was talking in Matthew 24, 15. He referenced the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. So Jesus was speaking of a time yet to come, and so are we. It is obvious that the last three and a half years of the time of the end is what Daniel is being told about, okay? So Daniel is being told that this terrible time will not only be uh, for a few days, weeks, and months, but it'll go for a full three and a half years. And that's confirmed in both the New and the Old Testaments. Go to slide 14, please. Thank you, Lauren. This is uh, just uh, about five different references, six actually, if you count two in Revelation 12. What these verses do for us, they, they talk about the time, times, the dividing of time. Uh, and then in Daniel 12, 7, it's time, times, and a half. And Revelation 11, 2, it's referred to as 40 and two months. And, uh, and you see in Revelation 12, 6 and 14, 1,203 score, that's 12, that's 1,260. Uh, and then again in 13, 5, it's referred to as 42 months. So it's all three and a half years. It's all exactly three and a half years, which is, prophetically speaking to the Israel, 1,260 days. Well, now he's told about 1,290 days. So now there's a discrepancy there, right? No. Does God make a mistake? No. 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 I think it's up to us then to say, okay, what are you telling me, Lord? Go to slide 15. The three and a half years of Daniel 9.27 are normally taken, as I said, to be three and a half years or 42 months of 30 days each following the custom of the Jews, 1260 days. Um, why then are 30 days added to the 1260 days? Well, the text doesn't explain. What does that tell me? We don't need to know. We don't need to know. What was Daniel told? You don't, need to, you don't need to know. It's sealed. We're not going to be here. We're not going to be here. That we do know. That we do know. Thank you, Lord. For that. Yes, yes, yes. But this question is further complicated in verse 12, where it states that there is a special blessing for the one who attains the 1,335 days. Well, I've got my picture up there. Uh, this is still another 45 days beyond that which was added in verse 11. So as I've been uh, making clear here, folks, I'm going to tell you what I think is being referred to here um, as best as I can. Since Daniel himself questioned why these various durations are in place, I join him by admitting that I don't totally understand what he's being told, just like him. So I believe the 1260-day period, which we saw in those six references are precisely 42 months of 30 days each. That was how the Jews counted these things. And it can be regarded as culminating, that 1260 days will culminate in the second advent of Jesus Christ. I believe that timeline is fixed and it will occur just as we understand it. Okay, at 1260 days, Jesus Christ puts boots on ground. But the second advent, is actually followed by several divine judgments, such as the judgment of the nations, spoken of in Matthew 25, 
verse 31 through 46. And the regathering and judgment of Israel, spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 20. These great judgments, although I believe they'll be handled quickly, will require time. So I think that by the end of the 300, I'm sorry, the 1335 days, or the 75 days after the second advent, these great judgments will have been accomplished. I think that's what takes place in those days. And the millennial kingdom is formally launched. Now, what I don't know enough to tell you is whether or not this, you go past, um, yeah, so you see the second coming is at precisely the 1260 days. Is that the first time, this is a test question to see how well I have done. Is that the first time we see in the scriptures? Because if you know when the tribulation starts, when does Daniel's 70th week start? When the Antichrist makes a treaty. Treaty. It's the signature on the treaty. Yep. That starts Daniel's 70th week. If you understand 1260 days, what kind of data then do you have? You know when it's going to end. You know when it's going to end. Exactly. Yes, exactly when it's going to end. Is that the first time we've seen that kind of miracle numbers in Daniel? No. How about the prediction of, the, of his procession into Jerusalem? Yes. Yeah, that was exact to the day that it was predicted to Daniel. 500 years before it happened. It laid out and just to the day. That's why those people were there. You know, waiting for him and the Messiah and all the palms and all that. Some of them had the numbers down. Well, this is another example. So I believe at the 1260th day, Jesus Christ is coming again. Second advent, boots on ground. Okay, but then you've got the 30 days and the 45 days. I think what's happening here is the sheep and the goats judgment of Matthew 12, or I'm sorry, Matthew 25, 31 through 46. And then Ezekiel speaks of some other activity that takes place. But I don't know. And, and the millennial kingdom lasts for how long? A thousand. a thousand years. And then we're on into eternity. So these first few days, the 30 days and the 45 days, do they happen inside that thousand years or outside? Outside. I, I would lean toward I that. I, I, I'm with you, Tim, but I don't know. But I think that's why the additional dates, what was to be accomplished and what we're told that needs to be done, doesn't fit in Daniel's 70th week. It is activity that takes place after. So, that's uh, slide 16, please. Or are we on slide 16? No, we're on 13. 13, okay, go to 16. Okay, Daniel. Okay. Slide 16, Daniel, here's the plan. And our plan is to be done today with Daniel. <laughs> Verse 13, but you, you know, it's done. He's been told, you're going to get no more data. And we have puzzled through a lot of data today. Just the data we puzzled through today is a whole college course. So we're, we're covering it at a very high level. But you, go, go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. So God told Daniel some things when he finished this prophecy. He said, I think these are what he wants to say to us today, as a matter of fact. Verse 13 starts off with that phrase, but you go your way till the end. Daniel was told to go back to what he was supposed to be doing. He's supposed to be taking care of his responsibilities. He's been given all this data, just like we got today. Well, what are we supposed to do with it? What do we do with this data? Well, like what he got told, we go your way till the end. When we study prophecy, you can get so enamored with this, with the mystery of it, and, and, and that we can neglect to focus the reason for our study at all. The reason for our study at all is that we take this information and we share it with people out there who don't know the Lord. Right, right, right. That's what we do. We take this data. Uh, the Lord is coming. These are the things that it's going to lay out. This is what the scriptures tell us. We know it's true. It has to be true because 80% of it already has been fulfilled. So we know the remaining part will be too. And we share this knowledge with others, right? That's what we're supposed to do. Get involved in the lives of others and, and pass on these timeless truths to them. 
The, uh, the uh, hospice ministry for Granny and I has been a gold mine for speaking to folks about the gospel who normally wouldn't otherwise hear it or have anybody in their lives who would bring that to them. Uh, with Ellen in the hospital yesterday, we got to talk to, it must have been at least eight or nine people of her immediate family. And she put on a brave face uh, she smiled at us as we talked. She was able to communicate, but she's in horrible pain. She's in horrible pain, and they're having a hard time getting it under control for her. Uh, but with her family around, Ellen, as a believer, uh, wanted her family spoken to. And her daughter, Kim, specifically spoke to us about that. So it was a praise the Lord moment that that prayer was answered. And then... Yesterday, we got a call from Ohio. Uh, one of Pat's relatives, in fact, her only remaining sister, telling us that our church, as we preach the gospel to those families, she said she's been praying for that family for years to have somebody come and tell them about the gospel. And here we do on the day that uh, Pat is uh, checking out into eternity. But the prayer was answered. So that's what you guys do. As you participate in these kinds of programs, those prayers behind the scenes that you don't even know are being uttered, God is using you to fulfill those prayers. That's what we do with this information. We can speak now more knowledgeably to what God's plan is ahead. It is not ghosty. It is not um, fog machine kind of stuff. It's clear, okay? It's clear. So we're to be getting involved with other people in their lives and present to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then follow it on with what is God's plan for eternity. He's laid it out for us. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're to go our way, and we're to do that till the end. That's what going your way to me means to me. So this kind of study convinces us, really, for me, more fully than ever of the reality of God. And we need to pass that passion on to others through evangelism. The next thing he says is, for you shall rest. Daniel, God is telling Daniel, you deserve to rest. Do you think he deserves a rest? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Kirsten? All right, I'm going to go five minutes over, and you can blame your sister Kirsten for this. All right? Blameless society. I get to the rest part, and what does she do? She starts yawning. So we're not there yet. What a great promise. Right? Yes, it is. You deserve to rest. Thank what a great Lord. promise. Yes, thank His you. long and, would you say, strange and his wonderful journey was about to end. No more would he be the, 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 the target for lions in the den or these cruel, um, jealous office seekers. Not going to be their target anymore. He had seen the last of the den of hungry lions. Anyway, they weren't hungry anymore. Why is that? They ate, well. <laughs> they, ate the <laughs> they ate the other guys. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. So his righteous soul is going to cease to be plagued by the sins of the Jews and the Gentiles. He is going to rest. And he would rest awaiting that resurrection, that resurrection morning that we studied in Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. When all of Israel, the believers, will rise. When our work is done, we're going to hear those words from the Lord Jesus, go and rest. And then he ends that verse by saying, and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. So that's the promise of reward to Daniel here. God told Daniel he's going to receive an inheritance at the end of his days. We spent some time on that in Daniel 12 too. Do you have a reward ahead of you as well? Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. yes. And what a time it's going to be. I mean, what a time. There are going to be so many uh, rewards given out there at that time. And the Lord is going to say, uh, John Doe, come forward. And John Doe comes forward and, 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 and the Lord reads off the things that he did for the Lord. And we're going to, we'll be astonished, right? Because so many people do so many things that so many others don't know about. And yet it's dedicated to the Lord. I think it's going to be a special and awesome time. I think, you know, he spent most, Daniel spent most of his life as a, What's the politically correct word? It's not alien. He wasn't a... Outcast. He, he was what? An outcast. An outcast. He wasn't an alien in the Babylonian country, right? He, he was... Uh, I don't know what the political term is anymore. Politically undocumented. Thank you. Politically undocumented. Yeah. 
He never was in his homeland from the time he was 14. A part of his reward is going to be restoral of Israel's land to Israel. That will all be laid out for the millennial kingdom and he'll be there. What an awesome time it's going to be for him. What a special time. And we are too going to get our, a reward for our service to him. Slide 17, please. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's a five-minute penalty. Oh, oh. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know I got extra time. Anybody else want to say anything? Uh, <laughs> 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 We're living in the time of the end. I believe we are. I think the Lord's return is imminent. I think things are getting close. They're very close. Uh, it's closer than it's ever been. Yes, it is. Isn't it closer than when I started speaking today? Right. Yes. yes. This is going to be an awesome thing. Have we learned from the experience of this man, Daniel, anything, even though he might have lived 2,500 years ago? I think we have. In the course of our studies, do you know that we've gone through, just in my own notes, 582 pages of compiled and consolidated notes? We could put together a Sage Creek Bible Church book now and then and go published. That's what, that's what mega churches do. They publish books. So we could be a mega. Uh, I'd like to give special thanks to John Walvoord who is now dead and gone. Uh, Clarence Larkin, who is also not with us anymore. David Jeremiah, who is with us. Uh, Alba J. McLean. Alba J. McLean has a, a book on the numbers of the, of the entry of the Lord into Israel that is magnificent. John Whitcomb, loved his book. Frederick Tatford, one of the best authors on the book of Daniel that I have ever come across. And uh, Dave Shoup put me on to him. So thanks to Dave for steering me down Frederick Tatford's path. And there are a host of others who contributed to our study over these last few months. Uh, and I, I praise the Lord for their work. After our journey with Daniel, we should be able to do one thing that I would be concerned about right now. And that is to read the handwriting on the wall. Just as they did all those centuries past and know that the Lord is near. His time is coming. Slide 18. The key to this whole thing is that we should not be caught by surprise. That's right. <laughs> is that the one Joseph sent you? No. no. Okay. That's, that's slide 19. Oh. <laughs> that's slide 19. <laughs> we should not be caught by surprise. Am I right? What's about to happen to this scientist? He's going to die of a heart attack. Yes, he's going to get caught by surprise. This guy behind him. I worked with people like that. So, <laughs> they think this is funny. So they do it at work. Which one are you? <laughs> Which one am I? He's the one with the I'm hammer. the poor guy with the hammer. Yeah. So that's why this meant so much to me. We started our study on Daniel on 27 June 2021. And as we know back then, the world was celebrating National Sunglasses Day. National Orange Blossom Day, National Ice Cream Cake Day, and National Onion Day. Now here we are 17 months later, right? We find ourselves finally putting a bow on this package of this magnificent book. And how does the world celebrate it? Today is Argyle Day. It just makes no sense to me. Is this Argyle? I don't know. But it's amazing to me that in his book, the Bible, our loving God gave us the greatest of gifts in showing us what is to come. So we of all people should not be surprised at what is to come. We know his plan, at least that which he has decided to share. And my prayer is that I have at least adequately taken you through some very technically complex information uh, to help you discover just a bit of the precious jewels embedded in the word of God. I think it's an awesome book. Slide 19, please. <laughs> this, was, this was from Joseph. So he has added his, um, his comments here to us as well. I, 
would close today, I got nothing more to say. I'd like to say a lot. But I think the Lord has given us uh, what he's given us. Is there anybody that wants to add anything to today's study? Is, uh, is Dave on? Yes. Okay. Dave, can you get him to, let's ping him up to close us in prayer. All right. Let me... Now, it isn't just the illegal use of cell phones. You guys know the rules. <laughs> no zippers? No zippers. No Bible cover zippers. Better be zippering while we're speaking, right? I already did. <laughs> I guess once you get a five-minute penalty, you don't get any more. Well, Herb, while you're here, we'll have uh, we'll have you close, and then we'll, did you want to say anything? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Real quick, Jose, I need to see you, Gus, and Terry. After services, got the uh, the Bible buying issue solved. Oh, you did. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, so okay. it should take about five minutes there. Okay. And then uh, um, real quick, uh, I went to prison. I went to prison ministry today. <laughs> they did let me out. How good behavior. And um, despite what you said. And so um, there's a, another evil rearing its ugly head, especially in the prison. It's the Judaizers. Oh, no. They're back. They're back. And they are back with a force. And they are being very militant there. And they are proselyting through a lot of legalism and uh, law revisiting. So we need to pray about that. Okay, okay Herb, is Dave is Dave ready to go? I believe so. Okay, so Herb, go ahead and close. Are you want, let's do Dave first uh, because we don't want to lose him. Uh, if he if he's good, let's go. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, let's. Let's pray. Our Father, we want to thank you so much for the great gift of your word to us. And thank you for this magnificent book of Daniel and the magnificent study of the book of Daniel that we enjoyed over the past 17 months. Amazing thing. And Howard Hendricks would say, my friend, uh, you will not exhaust this book. This book will exhaust you. Amen. And certainly we have found that to be true because now we see, oh, we haven't really scratched the surface of all of this. And we're also touched by the fact that Daniel now comes to the end of this revelation, divine revelation from the Lord and uh, I'm told that he is ready now to enter into his inheritance. What a wonderful thing that is. And what a wonderful thing that every child of God has the prospect of inheritance for him. But now, Heavenly Father, today, uh, what we pray for is that we will hear the shout of the Lord's return, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God. Father, we know that uh, the dead in Christ will, will be raised, but we, if we're still here, we're going to be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and ever be with him. We're gonna miss that 70th week and we're not sorry to do so. Amen to that. We're looking forward, Heavenly Father, to the second return of your Son, the Lord Jesus, and the establishment of the kingdom, and being able then to love and serve him forever. Amen. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, in closing, I would like to agree with Dave, everything you brought before your throne here this afternoon, uh, for the inheritance that's waiting for us, for the rapture and for the second coming. And Father, I'm asking right now that uh, as you have everything under control, we want to thank you that you do have everything under control. Nothing is outside of your purview. And so we want to thank you for that. 
And now I, I ask, Father, that you'll just give us the grace to constantly worship you and to serve you until that day comes where we're called up to, to heaven with you. And I ask all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I got one more thing, Father. Uh, the uh, Judaizers there in Lyman Prison, I, I'm asking, Father, that they would be shown the truth and that they would be cut to the heart as to the truth of the matter. As uh, Pastor Briggs has that ready to go, we're asking, Father, that the Judaizers would be... Uh, bought to not that they would pour contempt on their plans and allow them to wander without aim. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray these things, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you, girl.